Hello and welcome back to Coco Sleep, a podcast of original children's bedtime stories and meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. First things first, get out the drums, bells and whistles as we've got a whole crowd of you to welcome tonight into the Coco Clubhouse. So, a huge warm welcome and hello to Gracelyn, Josie, Bree, Wilbur, Nicole, Zara, Marvel, Noble, B, Harriet, Alice and Atlas, Magnus, Freya, and Elijah. We're all thrilled to have you join us and hope you're finding plenty of time to enjoy all your extra episodes with no boring ads. Yippee! Let's get started then, because tonight is pretty exciting. We are soon going to meet a young boy like no other. He's called Atticus, and he lives a truly swashbuckling lifestyle on the high seas. Seriously, he lives on a ship, but not any old ship. This is a pirate ship. He lives there with his parents, and they are always on the hunt for adventure. So let's all get comfortable in bed and settle in for this eye-opening, exciting adventure. It's going to be a goodie. We'll soon get to know Atticus and his pirate crew, and join them as they visit a deserted island that holds a very special secret within its sands. As you lie there, with your eyes closed and your breathing rising and falling in your chest nice and calmly, like the waves lapping on the shore, breathe in and out, in and out. Imagine you are sailing on a big ship out in the middle of the sparkling blue ocean. This is Atticus the Pirate by Alicia Ainsley. Atticus was a typical ten-year-old. He liked playing games and practicing sports and had an inquisitive mind. He had a couple of close friends whom he spent most of his time with and he loved his parents very much. Atticus was your usual ten-year-old boy except for one big thing. He lived on a pirate ship. Atticus lived a very exciting life for, you see, Atticus was a pirate. Well, actually Atticus's parents were pirates. Atticus just hoped to one day grow up to be one. Atticus, his pirate parents and their crew sailed the seven seas on their majestic ship, exploring new lands and searching for hidden treasures. Let's meet some of the crew, shall we? Well, we couldn't start without introducing you to Atticus's pirate parents. There's Captain Sloane, his mother, and Captain Cliff, his father. Sloan and Cliff were well known amongst other pirates for being excellent swashbucklers, intrepid explorers and clever detectives. Sloan and Cliff had sailed the globe for many, many years, uncovering mysteries and finding buried trunks of precious gold and historical artefacts that nobody else had managed to find. They started as a duo, then took on a few trusty crew members, and eventually they welcomed their son, Atticus, to the fold. But having a baby didn't stop them from enjoying their pirate life. Atticus grew up on the pirate ship, joining his parents on all their adventures. The first member of their crew was Ace. Ace was an impressive pirate with a keen eye for navigation and excellent map reading skills. His sailing prowess was so good that he also doubled up as the ship's sailing master, instructing the other sailors and guiding them all to new lands as the captains requested. Ace was Atticus's favorite crew member, 
and he looked up to him as a shining example of what a great pirate should be. Oh, and did I mention that Ace is a chimpanzee? Yes, that's right. Ace, the talking chimpanzee, was the ship's first mate. As first mate, Ace was second in command and the captain's right-hand man, or right-hand chimp in this case. You might think that it sounds odd to have a chimpanzee as second in command on a pirate ship, but you haven't met the rest of the crew yet. Next up in the lineup was Huck. Huckleberry was his full name, but he preferred Huck for short. Huck had been a pirate for all of his life, and that was a very long time. Nobody knew exactly how old Huck was, but Atticus assumed he must be close to 100 years old on account of his wise face and penchant for telling wild stories that spanned many generations. Huck was an old man and an old pirate. He had a long white beard, braided all the way down so that it almost reached the floor, and he wore an eye patch across his face. He had a wooden leg and walked with a wooden stick that had a ruby stone pressed into the top. It was allegedly the first piece of treasure that he ever found, and he had kept it close by ever since. To look at, Huck was exactly what you would expect of a pirate. However, nowadays, Huck spent most of his time singing sea shanties from the lookout spot and recounting stories of his youth rather than providing much support to the rest of the crew. Atticus had heard that Huck used to be one of the greatest swashbucklers on the high seas, but now... Huck could barely lift a sword, let alone swing one. One of the most crucial crew members on the ship was Rain, the bosun. Rain was adventurous, skilled and quick thinking. She supervised almost everything on the ship and worked alongside Ace the Chimp to ensure that everything ran smoothly on board. It was Rain who had given Atticus his first lesson in swashbuckling and taught him how to read Latin. She was an inspiration to Atticus and he hoped that one day he would grow up to be as talented a pirate as she was. But Atticus still had a long way to go to become a true pirate. There were certain tasks that you must accomplish before you could earn your eye patch, your bandana, and your sword. It was the way of the pirates. In order to become a true pirate, Atticus would have to accomplish the following things to earn his pirate stripes. A true pirate had to uncover hidden treasure, win a swashbuckling competition, learn how to read the stars and guide a ship across the sea, and help someone through a tricky situation. Atticus had begun learning how to do some of these things, but he was still young and had a lot more to learn. Besides, having the opportunity to help someone or find buried treasure didn't come along very often. He would need to wait for the perfect moment. Every day on the pirate ship was different, but there were some similarities in each day too. Atticus would always start his day by doing some schoolwork. His father, Captain Cliff, taught him science, while his mother, Captain Sloan, taught him maths. And as I mentioned, Rain the bosun taught him how to read both English and Latin. By the time he had finished his classes, he would head out onto the top deck just in time for lunch. Lunch is served. Come get your grub, a squawky voice would call out across the deck every day at 12 o'clock. All of the crew members would jump to attention and rush down into the galley to eat lunch. They were always starving by midday 
and couldn't wait to eat another of the chef's masterpieces. Oh, I forgot to mention another important member of the ship's crew, Estelle the parrot cook. That's right, a parrot was the official cook on board the pirate ship. Well, she is a scarlet macaw, technically, with a bright red body and dazzling yellow and blue wings. It might sound silly to have a parrot as a chef, but if you tried Estelle's vegetarian chili, you would understand why. It is fantastic. Estelle the parrot grew all of her ingredients aboard the ship in her own little vegetable garden. On the top deck, closest to the sun, Estelle tended to her vegetable garden day in and day out to grow the most delicious succulent vegetables, herbs and spices to use in her cooking. Captain Sloan and Captain Cliff had first encountered Estelle the parrot and her cooking when they docked in Mexico several years ago. They had visited her restaurant to eat and been dazzled by her tasty concoctions. They had invited her to join their pirate crew as their chef, and tempted by the idea of daily adventures and boundless freedom, Estelle had accepted their offer. Atticus's favourite food that Estelle made was her gooey chocolate brownies. She only had cocoa in her kitchen from time to time, when they stopped by in countries the likes of Nigeria and Peru. But when she had some, she always made a few extra pieces of chocolate brownie just for Atticus. Anyway, I've gone a bit off topic. I've been too distracted by Estelle's delicious food. Where were we? Ah, yes, after lunch, Atticus would continue his work as a pirate apprentice. Each day, he would follow a different member of the crew to watch how they worked and learn from their knowledge and experience to develop his own pirating skills. He would observe both of his parents as they went about their captain duties. Sometimes, they would even let him practice giving out orders to the crew and selecting a location to sail to next. Atticus loved the idea of being in charge of a pirate ship and hoped that one day he would follow in his parents' footsteps. Atticus was often paired with Ace the chimp for his apprenticeship work, which he was more than happy about. It seemed like Ace knew everything there was to know about a ship. An ace delighted in creating quizzes to test Atticus's knowledge. Ace quizzed Atticus on everything from the countries of the world to the types of creatures in the sea, myths and legends to the names of the sides of the boat. They were called starboard and portside, by the way. With every one of Ace the Chimp's quizzes, Atticus felt like he was learning more and more and, one day, would know everything there was to know about being a successful pirate. But the best thing about Ace the Chimp was that Atticus looked up to him like a protective big brother. Ace always had Atticus's back, and whenever Atticus felt a little under the weather or down about something, Ace always managed to cheer him up. When Atticus was a little younger, his parents sometimes wouldn't let him get off the pirate ship with them. Whenever they were heading out on an adventure to search for some hidden treasure, they deemed Atticus too young to come along. Atticus wanted to join them so badly, but his parents assured him that when he was older, he could head out on pirating missions with them. While Atticus was forced to stay on board the ship, Ace, the chimp, would stay behind with him. Ace declared himself as Atticus's guardian. He was sworn to protect him at all costs, and so instead of heading out on adventures himself, Ace would stay with Atticus on the boat to keep him company and keep him safe.
What could have been very dull and disappointing days for Atticus turned into some of the best days he had on the ship. He and Ace would play games on the deck and make up their own sea shanties to sing. They created their own secret handshake and identified creatures in the sea that passed by. Once, while all the rest of the crew had gone ashore, Atticus and Ace saw a humpback whale leap out of the water near the boat, splashing a wave of water over the top deck. They ran to the side of the boat and called out to the gentle giant to grab their attention. It turned out that the humpback whale was swimming around with their child, and they were practicing their acrobatic skills. Atticus and Ace happily served as an audience to the young whale as it practiced and showcased its moves to them, before swimming back off into the open sea. When the rest of the crew returned to the boat and Atticus recounted the story, they hadn't believed him. But Atticus and Ace didn't need anyone to believe them. They knew the truth, and that was all that mattered. Atticus had a lot of fun training with the other members of the crew, too. Whenever Atticus was an apprentice to Rain, the bosun, She would often allow him to slack off from pirating duties and treat him to a game of swashbuckling to test out his skills. Rain had said several times that Atticus showed promise as a successful swashbuckler and she expected that he would earn one of his pirate stripes for it sooner rather than later. Atticus hoped so. He couldn't wait to become a true pirate and put his skills to the test. Atticus would spend hours practicing his sword flourishing and parries with rain on the deck, and sometimes she would even let him wear her pirate bandana while he did it, so that he could feel like a proper pirate. Training with old Huck was a bit more laid back. Since Huck couldn't do much that was energetic anymore, He would sleepily sit in the crow's nest as the lookout for hours on end. Whenever Atticus had to shadow him, Huck would hand him a telescope and tell him to look out over the sea for approaching ships and distant lands. Then Huck would spend the rest of the time snoozing and snoring in the crow's nest until it was time for dinner. Estelle the parrot would always say, Why do we have the oldest man on the ship as lookout? He can barely see what is two metres in front of him, let alone what is miles in a distance. But Atticus didn't mind. He enjoyed his time serving as lookout. Through the telescope, he would often see dolphins dancing in the distance and sometimes spot the mast of a ship passing by, far ahead. It was a great way of observing the sea and getting a better bearing of where they were sailing. One day, these skills would prove very handy. Although Huck could often be a sleepy sailor, sometimes he was still useful. Land ahoy! Old Huck called out from the lookout point one day. Rain the bosun rolled her eyes as if she was expecting it not to be true. But to her surprise, when she turned round, she too could spot land ahead. Atticus ran over to Ace and asked him if he knew what island this was. The clever chimp consulted his map but he couldn't match it up. The island didn't appear to be on the map. Atticus's eyes lit up and his tummy started to bubble. He asked Ace, Do you think we might be about to find a secret island? 
Ace smiled and replied, Maybe. Wouldn't that be exciting? Atticus's parents ordered the crew to pull up offshore so that they could explore the island. They pulled up along a white, sandy beach surrounded by tall, green palm trees. There was nobody else around, so it was the perfect secluded spot for them to dock their boat. Estelle the parrot stayed on board to keep watch over the boat, while the rest of the crew hopped off to explore the island, even Atticus. The crew decided to split up to search the island for resources, so Captain Sloan and Captain Cliff went one way. Rain, the bosun and Huck paired off, and Atticus went off exploring with his trusty guardian, Ace the Chimp. The island appeared deserted. There was no sign of anybody else being there. It felt as though the island was reserved just for their pirate crew. After a while of walking along the beach in the hot sun, Ace and Atticus decided to sit down on the sand and relax. Atticus was glad that he had put on his sun cream today. The sun was so warm that he could feel his nose prickling from the heat. Ace turned to Atticus from his relaxed position and said, So what shall we call this new island we found then? Atticus grinned excitedly and looked around for inspiration. He spied the tall coconut trees and the large palm leaves that provided cool shade from the blazing sun. The sand on the beach was bright white, and the waters that lapped against the shore were a crystal clear azure blue. The island was a paradise by all accounts. There was no sign of life on the island except for their crew. If Atticus closed his eyes, all he could hear were the waves lapping on the sand and the sea breeze blowing through the trees. It was blissful. If he was going to choose a name for the island, then it had to be a good one, one that reflected the atmosphere of the island. Then, all of a sudden, Atticus noticed the sand to his side starting to bubble and quake. The grains of sand began to shift, and he watched in awe as something small tried to push its way through. Atticus nudged Ace to capture his attention and whispered, Look, what's going on? Ace looked just as perplexed as Atticus, and they stared at the moving sand with anticipation. They watched as the sand crumbled to the sides and out poked a little face with big black eyes and a curved beak-like snout. The little creature continued to shuffle its way out of the sand and, as it emerged, Atticus and Ace could see more clearly. With its large, ridged shell and four flappy legs, it could only be one thing. It was a baby turtle. Ace had a moment of recognition and he clapped his hands with delight. He whispered to Atticus excitedly, It must be a baby turtle hatchling. How wonderful! But, Usually there is much more than just one baby turtle hatching at a time. I wonder where the others are. As if they had heard him, right on cue, the sand around Atticus and Ace started to bubble and shift, and they watched on in awe as maybe a hundred baby turtles 
emerged from the beach. The cute, tiny creatures scooted their shells out of the sand and used their flailing legs to drag their bellies towards the sea. The hundred or so adorable hatchlings reached the water to take their first swim and jumped straight in. They coasted the shallow waves before diving down into the deep blue sea and out of sight. Wow, sighed Atticus, amazed by the incredible moment. Ace explained to Atticus what they had just seen. He explained that the mother turtle lays her eggs in the sand and leaves them safely covered for around 60 days so that the babies have time to grow. Then, when the babies are ready to hatch, they emerge from the sand and return to the sea to start their new life. Atticus smiled affectionately and gazed out to sea. What a beautiful thing to witness. He turned back to Ace the Chimp and suggested, I have an idea for what we should call the deserted island. It should be called Turtle Bay. Ace thought that was a great name. Turtle Bay it is, he agreed. Captain Sloan and Captain Cliff wandered over to where Atticus and Ace were sitting, carrying as many coconuts as they possibly could. Atticus jumped up and asked his parents if they had seen the sea turtles hatching from the sand too, but they were disappointed to have missed out. It seemed that only Atticus and Ace were lucky enough to have witnessed the natural phenomena. Rain the bosun and Huck approached from behind Atticus's parents, carrying lots of coconuts too, and Atticus and Ace jumped up to help out as well. Apparently, Estelle had said that if they got enough coconuts from the island, then she would cook up a delicious coconut curry for dinner. So everyone was on hand to pick as many coconuts as possible from the trees. With around 30 coconuts picked between them all, the pirate crew returned to the boat and delivered the coconuts to the galley for Estelle. Atticus could already imagine how delicious Estelle's curry would be for dinner, and he licked his lips in anticipation. The crew returned to their positions, ready to set off back out into the open sea. The day was drawing closer to its end, and Atticus could see the sun beginning to set in the distance. The sun's orange rays were radiating out across the water at the point of the horizon, and the sky was turning a deeper shade of purple. Soon it would be night, and Atticus could practice identifying the star constellations which was one of his favourite things to do. The boat pulled away from Turtle Bay and set sail across the still sea. Atticus leant over the side of the boat and gazed at the waters below. On their pirate ship, they could travel anywhere they wanted. By the time Atticus was an old man like Huck, he would have travelled the world several times over. He knew that he would see so many amazing, miraculous things, just like catching the baby turtles hatching on the beach. The world was full of possibilities and adventures, and Atticus couldn't wait to experience it all. As Atticus gazed down into the crystal clear waters. He spotted a dolphin meandering its way playfully through the sea at the side of the boat. As Atticus looked closer, 
he spotted something else swimming there too. Dotted around the dolphin, as if using it as their guide, were three baby turtles swimming alongside. It seemed that the baby turtles were getting used to their new home and new world very quickly. Atticus rested his head on his folded arms and watched the graceful sea creatures navigate through the waters. The gentle movement of their bodies and the subtle ripples of the waves, combined with the rocking of the ship, made Atticus feel a little sleepy. That was another thing that was fantastic about living on a pirate ship. There was nothing better to see you off to a soothing sleep than the soft swaying of the boat and the sounds of the ocean in your ears. Atticus looked out at the sea and the setting sun, embraced the bobbing motion of the boat, and dreamt of what his next adventure would be in his thrilling life as a trainee pirate on a pirate ship.